Shalom WJC families. It is time once again for our weekly Torah talk. This week in synagogue on Shabbat, we'll be reading Parshat Noah, the very famous story of the flood and the recovery after the flood. And it seems like a very important time, a very appropriate time to be uh, reading Parshat Noah. And the, the parallel I want to make, like a flood is different from a pandemic, but anxious times are anxious times. And so the parallel I want to make, the question I'd like to ask is, how do you think Noah and his family felt the first time it was going to rain after they got off the ark? As the storm clouds were collecting overhead, how do you think they felt? Of course, they were traumatized and they must have felt incredibly anxious. And so too, we today feel incredibly anxious. Our storm hasn't passed. This pandemic has not stopped. It's had its ups and its downs, and it seems like once again we are in an up. And for very good reason, after the trauma of the spring and then the summer, we have every reason to be anxious. So I want to look at Noah's story and our story and see if there is a lesson for us for this moment in the story that we've been reading for thousands of years. We're told that Noah is anxious by the Midrash and by the commentaries, Rashi and others. They tell us, God says to Noah, get off the ark and go and make babies, right? Be fruitful and multiply and refill the earth. Apparently Noah doesn't do it. Apparently, Noah doesn't want to have children, to bring children into a world that seems broken and like it could disappear, be destroyed at any moment. And so God says to Noah, I get it. I get it. I will make a covenant with you that says I will not destroy the rain, the world by rain anymore. And you'll know it because when the clouds gather, I'm going to put my bow, the rainbow, in the sky. And thus you will know that these clouds are not coming to destroy the world, just to water the ground. And that covenant gets interpreted over the years as the seven Noahide laws, these basic human rights, these basic human ideas Unlike the 613 mitzvot that we get as Jews from the Torah, every single person is bound by these seven Noahide laws, right? The seven laws of the B'nai Noah, of all people who are the children of Noah after the flood. And what's fascinating about these laws, some of the laws are between man and God, right? You're, you're not allowed to commit idolatry, even if you're not Jewish. But other laws are between people. You shouldn't murder. And you have to have a court system for justice. And others are between man and animals. You're not allowed to eat trefa, which literally means that the limb of an animal that's still alive, which you don't have to think about too much. I think that's pretty gross. But anybody, nobody is allowed to do that. So these seven Noahide laws, this covenant that God makes after the flood, not only dictates our behavior between us and God, but also between us and other people and us and the natural world. Because when it comes to relieving anxiety, it's not only a promise that this isn't going to happen again, right? which can only be in some ways an empty promise. Who knows what the future will bring? But in the covenant, God lays down certain moral laws, a covenant, a bond between God and people and people and people and people and the world that says we have to act in these certain moral ways, all of us, everyone and everything. And if we all behave within this covenant, we can relieve some of our anxiety because we'll know we're all in this together, man and God and beast, all in this together bonded by the recognition of our interreliance. Which brings us to today. How do we relieve some of this anxiety today? 
It would be great if we said this disease, coronavirus and COVID-19 is going to go away and we won't have to worry about it anymore. But we can't say that. I can't say that. What I can say is that what this moment demands more than anything else is that we act with our very highest moral and ethical character and values that moments like this, anxious moments, call for us to be at our best, to think the best of others, to do the best by others, to be there for others, to honor our social covenants, to support one another, to nurture one another, and to breed a system of justice, just like those Noahide laws, to breed a system of justice that says we will treat everyone fairly, whatever is coming down the pipe. In Noah's time, there was a flood and then there was fear. There was distrust between God and people, people and God, people and each other, people and animals. That same distrust that I spoke about last week, that is a sickness of our time. That distrust, that, that distrust is at least in part where this anxiety comes from and the way to address it is to build on what is best about our society, about our culture, about our social, ethical, moral norms. Our reaction to our anxiety should not be to curl up in a ball and block out the rest of the world. It is to make the rest of the world better by the way we act in it. And this moment calls for that, calls for our morality, calls for our ethics, calls for our mitzvot, the goodness we can do for others, and Merz Hashem, when we need it, the goodness that others will do for us. The seven Noahide laws are, in fact, a formula for anxious times, to recognize the covenant between us all. May we all recognize that covenant. We'll, may we all do our best by each other in this world, in this moment, now more than ever. We don't have the luxury to pull back. Now the world, society, and even God needs us to do our part. May we all rise to that challenge. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.